Hello and welcome to Visions. I'm Helen Rushcoot and our special guest today is Les Price, a business coach, speaker and visionary business leader. Welcome to the program, Les. Thank you, Helen. It's a pleasure to be here. Fantastic. Yeah. Listen, Les, you've had a very interesting career, um, starting off with cleaner, telemarketer, programmer, recruiter, manager, consultant, trainer, hypnotherapist, coach and business owner, just to name a few. This is quite an extensive career to still be 21 and have done all those jobs, isn't it? 21. Look at you. You look fantastic. <laughs> Certainly do. <laughs> yes. Well, tell us a little bit about your background and your current business mm -hmm. in Spirited. Yeah. Well, you may not realise it, but I was actually born uh, in Africa, in Kenya, in Nairobi. And uh, at the age of one, my parents uh, decided to immigrate. They left there because of the trouble in Africa and during independence. Mm. And they decided uh, to be real adventurers, real entrepreneurs and pilgrims and actually come to Australia. And uh, I really grew up most of my life living in Melbourne, in Australia. And, uh, you know, it was a challenging time because at that time there weren't uh, too many Asian or Indian families. Mm. So, you know, there was quite a bit of, you know, the usual things you get with race issues and other things. But, you know, I got through all of that. And uh, it was really after I finished high school that uh, one day I was visiting a library and I actually came across a, a really amazing book. And I didn't realise it at the time. It was just coincidence. But it was called The Silver Mind Control Method. And that really opened me up, you know, because at that time I'd been really a left brain thinker. Mm. But this was telling me that I could actually change my life by just changing the thoughts that I had, by changing the beliefs that I had. And that one little book, I didn't realize at that time, led me on like a 14 year journey, which was in search of understanding what makes people truly powerful, what makes them live at their full potential. Mm. And so in 1996, um, I'd spent some time in the UK for a few years. I came back to Australia and that's where I really started Inspirited. And uh, the business Inspirited is really about helping you know, individuals, aspiring individuals, to really live their purpose, to live their passion, and to live an enlightened life. And you, you were inspired to give up a corporate world and a lucrative career to become a professional speaker on business and personal development. Yeah, that's right. It's, um, it's interesting because, you know, at that time uh, I'd been in the UK and I was working for a very successful company, six-figure salary and all of that. Mm -hmm. And I was doing one day a, a program in, in Hawaii at, with a, one of America's uh, most famous coaches over there. And this program went for nine days and we did all sorts of things like fire walks and really amazing things. And it was during that process I realised it was something calling me that said, Les, you know, this isn't for you. You know, this corporate life and everything you're doing, it's great, but it's not fulfilling the heart. And at that time I just realised I needed to make a shift, you know. And at that point I decided I was going to resign. I was almost going to call up from Hawaii and say I'm not coming back to work. However, I got back to Melbourne and uh, when I mentioned that to my boss, I mean, he was really supportive and that created a whole new range of opportunities for me that led to me following that calling. That's a big jump. Mm. A very big Certainly jump. Is. Mm. And like many children, you struggle to find your own self-esteem, your own self-confidence and your own self-identity. So how does someone who's lived most of their life as a victim really become a true leader? Mm. Yeah, most of the clients I actually work with, it's, it's funny because I grew up with that whole perspective of not really having really strong role, role models mm. uh, to really encourage around self-esteem and your own ability and I really struggled with that in the early years, you know, especially at school when a lot of kids would be calling me names and different things, you know, only because of colour and race. And I always thought it was funny because, you know, they used to call me coloured, yet I used to watch them and when, you know, when, when they actually got sunburnt, they turned red. You know, when they got cold, they went blue. When they got sick, they turned green. And I said, and they're calling me coloured? But, uh, you know, the long end of it is, is that uh, I learned three keys that really shifted my life. And the first was personal responsibility. You know, that we're creating everything in our lives. At every moment, we're creating that. And by learning to own that instead of blaming others, it, it allowed me to get that power back within myself. And uh, the second one was actually a teacher in grade five, um, a Sri Lankan lady who, who shared with me a real key. And she said, Les, you know, when they're doing that to you, turn it into humour. Make fun. Build humour around it because humour releases the tension. And, you know, it was a gift at that time because I started to turn my colour. And I used to make jokes about it. I used to make jokes about my Indian identity. You know, little did I know that these days people are into Bollywood and dancing and they absolutely love it. <laughs> so it's funny and I think that's where I'm at a point now of blending that Eastern and Western wisdom and culture together and sharing that, that essence with people. So why do you believe that so few people 
follow their true calling and purpose? You know, if there's one word about that, I'd say it'd be fear. You know, it's that, that word that we all you know, don't like to mention, but it is fear. You know, each of us is born, I believe, with our own purpose, our own calling. It's whether we'll listen to that. Uh, in the Christian Bible, it's funny, in the book of Jeremiah, you know, it talks about a God who comes to Jeremiah and says, Jeremiah, you know, I knew you would be before you were born. You know, before you were born, I planted a seed within you. I knew what you, what you, what you were destined for. I created that and I've given you a calling. And I believe we all have that same calling. We all have an assignment within us. It's whether we're ready and willing to listen to it. And a lot of the time it's the fear that covers that up. Um, one example of that was a, a, a young um, student that I worked with a few years back. Uh, he was a 17-year-old working in engineering. And um, he came to see me for a session and I did a whole counselling and hypnotherapy and change session with him. And he had a, a real bad stutter. He couldn't be in groups. He was always getting anxious and nervous. And it's funny, you know, four years later, after that session, he called me up and he said, Les, can I come and see you? And I said, yes, certainly. And when he came in, I just found out that really what it was is the fact that his whole life had changed. And it was one thing that I'd said to him before he left, he said, that use that anxiety to make a difference to others. So he went off, he wrote a book, he published it on the internet, was earning $4,000 a month and travelling all over the world. And I think that's the gift we all have when we listen to our calling. Yeah, and he confronted that fear. Oh, he confronted and then took it to the next level by turning that gift, that, that challenge into a gift for his life. And that brings me great joy. Oh, wow. Well, what a great vision that you mm. had for him and he was able to act on that and be where he is now. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. We'll just go to break now, um, Liz. As we go to break, stay tuned. We'll only be a few minutes.